Okay. Hi there, VJ. Hi, hi, hi. I'm just warming up a drink. Brandy, perhaps? No, I don't warm up my brandy. Coffee. <laughs> Coffee and ginger. Something I'm ex trying new. Here I am. You see? Coffee and ginger. Wow. Yeah, we'll see. I have a little bit left over of both. Hmm. Oh, it's you and me. Did you get my, did you get my message that Jenna K wants to show a video? I just got it. Yeah. How is there anything I get, I need to do? Yes, you have to you have to uh, share give her permission to share screen. Okay. Um, and I sent you a link, but I, I think she might be able to tell you, or Rabbi Rob might be able to tell you. But I don't think you, Rabbi Rob is going to be joining us today. Oh dear. Uh, Rabbi Rob, I believe, will not be joining us today. He sent an email out a few minutes ago. Oh, that's a pity because he's... It uh, might just be you and me. Good Lord. Well, Suzanne gave apologies. Deborah will come a little while. Good heavens. That would be disappointing, but never mind. It would be confirming of your decision, which we'll get to discuss a bit later. Um, let me find my email. Email. Al. President Bush's statement. Oh, hang on. I got a message. Oh, okay. Is this a current thing? Oh, what a pity. Anyway, here's it. We have a report. We can read it. Okay, I don't see the other message. Seek. I see his message, he's not gonna be here. Um, I just got a message and then it disappeared. Maybe I deleted it by mistake. But um, you can make Jenneke the co-host. And if you make her the co-host, she can then do everything. Okay, I just let her in. Yeah. And then you make her co-host. How do I do that? I don't know. Hi, Janiki. Hi. Um, uh, um, 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 Hari, who's the one with the white beard, is trying to um, figure out how to make you um, show your video. And we had advice. He, he could just make you co-host, but he can't, doesn't know how to find the buttons. Do you? Yeah. Well, or I can just guide you. Like if you I think only the host can do that. So um, if you go down to uh, where it says participants, chat, and then there's a share screen button. Do you see this share screen button? I see. Adam. A do share have... screen button. Sir, yes, I do. So you, exactly. And then there, there is an arrow next to it. And so you can say advanced settings you see that okay, got that and so then you say something like allow all participants to share their screen you that see sounds that? like a very um equal kind of thing uh, yeah who can share let's see oh huh yeah i it won't it won't indicate that one Hold on, there it is. 
all participants. Good. So there you go. All right. Thank you. And there we go. Uh, I have a for a moment. I have a technical issue. How you doing, Manfred? Pretty good. How are you? Good, good, man. Good. It's a beautiful day today, isn't it? It's well, it's, yeah. We're all alive. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's kind of cloudy, you know, it was much nicer yesterday, but it's okay. It's a nice day. Yeah. Little cloud, little rain. I've been out this morning already. I had my morning walk, so I'm good. I was out in the ocean all morning. It was spectacular. Yeah. I can't go in the ocean for another couple of weeks. Oh, really? Okay. I got a monitor on that I can't get that way. <clears throat> I get it. So welcome to the IROC meeting, um, Janaki. Welcome. It's I've never, uh, I don't know if I've ever met you before, but welcome to our uh, little IROC gathering. Thank you. And I understand you'll be sharing something today with us. Yeah, um, Wendy has asked me to um, share a little bit about uh, also my experience with Alma. Amaji, the Hugging Saint, and also the role of um, being with a living spiritual master. So I prepared something for that. Yeah. Um, shall I? Shall I get started? Yeah, I think I just wanted to say that um, we've had some unusual apologies of very regulars that were looking forward to this. Rabbi Rob had a wet, something came up with a wedding. Suzanne had work stuff come up. Suzanne, Deb, Deborah, that you know, and Suzanne, and I don't know who else. Um, I expected a lot more, but it's still lovely and it's being recorded. So yeah, welcome. And I think we've read your lovely um, introduction that's in the minutes and the agenda. So you can just introduce yourself and then share. And then I think we, I'm sure I have questions and things to say. So yeah, off okay. you go. Thank you, Janaki. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, and thank you for inviting me. Um, yeah, so a little bit about me um, is uh, I have, uh, met Ama 10 years ago for the first time, actually 11 years. And that was also the time when I started to just have more questions about life. You know, like, what is the meaning of life? Why are we here? Um, I've, I've known meditation for a while at that point, but um, but it was more of a, a concept. Um, and I feel at that time around, also when I met Amma for the first time, I, it gave me an, a deeper meaning of what meditation actually means. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, there's much more I could share. I, I've been on the island for four years, no, five years on and off. I also go to India a lot um, uh, to travel, to, uh, you know, to visit different ashrams, but especially Amas Ashram. And um, I've been meditating. I love meditation. And I've been meditating with the Brahma Kumaris. That's how I uh, met Wendy. And uh, it's very lovely. I love meditating with that sweet group and also I have been uh, learning also diving into the teachings of the Brahma Kumaris and and found that very interesting as well and um, so yeah and so coming back to Ama um, also just in general that's why I like the oh there's someone else coming 
Hi. Um, and hello. Hello. This <laughs> more and more Sonia's on a on her way as well. Oh, so, um, so welcome newcomers. Jenny K is already uh, launched in. So yeah, lovely. So yeah, um, yeah. So I thought I I actually start with two small videos just to introduce Amma. Some of you might know Amma. Some maybe even personally met her. Others might have heard of her. Others might have never heard of her. So I thought I'd just share a little bit about her. Um, <laughs> so Janaki, maybe you'd like to narrate this as we watch the video. Just one moment. Sorry, what was that? Maybe you'd like to narrate this while we watch the video because there's no sound on our end. Oh, there's no sound. No, no sound. Okay. Uh, thank you for letting me know. Um, yeah, so I have to make sure I don't hear the sound because <laughs> otherwise it's a bit uh, difficult for me to talk. Um, no sound. Why don't okay. you just uh, narrate it for us live? Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. So I think this is just a very short video that also has a lot of like has some text overlay that give the slides more meaning in it video that um that that I can talk a little bit about. So I just continue here. Okay, so that was the first video that I wanted to share. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Very impressive. Um, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, she kept her beautiful smile even in the midst of the disaster scenes, which was so authentic and wonderful. Uh-huh. Okay, and now, okay, I found a way to turn off sound. So here's another video. What the sound? My speaker's okay. crossed out on my 
on my yeah so this is basically showing how ama is giving darshan which is uh just a sanskrit word for divine transmission or divine grace and um i mean divine embrace and it's it just so beautifully shows how over and over there's people being hugged and you see so many tears flowing actually and and i have something to say about that too my personal experience after the video and yes yeah, she people actually from all kinds of spiritual paths and religions uh she got it to come and see her because she does not really represent one religion or one you know spiritual belief system she her her mission is just to to spread love divine love no, which no. is kind of unified so many traditions um in that message and um yeah so um, so these are just you know some introduction to show her in action um i don't even know exactly where that is but that's clearly look you know looks, looks like, like christian like nuns <laughs> yeah yeah exactly the, the blue stripes and um so she's 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 hugged over the, the last years a decade actually she's hugged more than 30 million people in the <laughs> world and she's when she holds a program in india it's just um there's so so many people coming and she also goes uh to other countries and the programs are a bit smaller. She also goes to the US and Europe and um, also to Singapore and Australia sometimes. And, mm -hmm. and she basically that's what you're seeing, like the, the hugging, that's what she's doing most of the time. People are lining up to, to get a divine embrace. And for the rest of the time, people can just sit and and watch her or there's some some uh devotional music would be playing in the background um yeah and you see so many tears and you see like this like sometimes these top men <laughs> wouldn't be close to tears at all you know just totally cracking open and um and she would also in the program she would meditation yeah, that's why i've been many times and she's also a lot uh involved she's she's uh uh founded uh and a humanitarian organization called Embracing the World. And, uh, and she, all, a lot of money that she received from through donations, for example, she um, redirects into humanitarian activities, especially in India, helping the poor. And especially, you know, when there's natural disasters, for example, after the, um, after the tsunami hit in, uh, in in that area it was actually I think Indonesia where it was the most destructive but India was also very much impacted she was the first to um, to make some finances available and send help even before the government was able to do that um, my partner uh, who has been with AMA for 25 plus years he was actually there when the tsunami hit and um yeah ha has also a quite a bit to share just just like very unusual and unique 
uh, things that happen around her sometimes also a little like miracles. Like for example, she, on the day the tsunami hit, um, she was giving darshan to visitors, like giving them the embrace. Um, and all of a sudden she looked up, the water is rising. Everyone in the ashram, please go at least one story up. And Westerners, like all the, the people who are non-Indian basically, um, please computer, send your family an email and just say, I'm okay. That's it. And once you're done, go up one or two stories. And then a few hours later, the tsunami hit and caused a lot of destruction. And um, but in the ashram, no one was hurt. Mm. Yeah. And but, yeah, the surrounding village, like the, the houses in the area where, um, yeah, it was just, everything was destroyed. And so she definitely helped the people um, to, to rebuild the houses in her area, but then also in the wider area. So that was just a little introduction. Oh, okay, now I see also more people. Hey, Deborah. Uh -huh. Hi, and hi, Sonia. And um, so, yeah, also, as I mentioned earlier, like I'm not going to introduce um, a religion or a, one spiritual path today. Um, it is more about my personal experience um, of being with an enlightened being basically and why I feel it is so important for my spiritual and um, personal development. Sorry, I, I make some notes, so sometimes I'll be looking down. <laughs> um, basically, Amma's main teaching is all about divine love and how to cultivate divine love and unconditional love and how to express it towards other people. And in other words, also like how to express it in words and in actions and also on an energetic and vibrational level. And um, now I'd like to share a little bit like my about my personal experience around her, which is um, every time I'm in her presence, especially when I get a hug from her, be deeply touched in my heart in a way that I have never experienced it um, with any other being. She looks like a human being, you know, but there's somehow, um, and she is certainly one, right? But there's just something around her that's very non-human, at least not compared to all the other humans I know, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, It has happened so many times. I would just enter the room and just burst out crying. And I would be like, especially in the beginning. Now I know, okay, I know why. And that's normal. But in the beginning, when I met her for the first time, I was like, wait a second. I, I wasn't sad at all. I was actually very happy to kind of be here. And why am I crying now? And... um. And it is just like tears, not of sorrow. It's tears of just feeling deeply, deeply touched. And um, just in the deepest part of my being. Then after those tears would subside, I would feel usually a, a, a deep sense of peace and just contentment and, and just, just wanting to be quiet and still and not do anything, not talk, just, just sit somewhere. And um, for me, that's also a state of meditation, actually. 
where there's just not much going on and it's just like a very comforting calmness. Um, and so I'm about this phenomena, I'm gonna teach is that this like a state of inner peace and contentment and happiness is actually our natural state. And in other traditions, you know, if you would hear similar things. And then she would say that of our mental afflictions and likes and dislikes and limiting belief patterns and possibly also emotional trauma, that because of those, uh, we are not always aware of our natural, naturally peaceful and content and happy state. And it's like a little bit like an, an analogy would be, it is like dirt on a window uh, that is not letting the light shine through. So the mental afflictions are like the, the dirt basically. Um, I've met Amr 11 years ago for the very first time. And I've been seeing her an average once a year. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I would skip a year, but then the other year I would be, ex you know, spend extra time in the ashram. So an average one year, I would say. Um, and I would either see her in the ashram in India or I would see her on US tour where she comes once or twice a year. And, and, um, and immersing myself over and over again in her presence and her divine presence, um, I feel like I have become a more compassionate, but just overall, if I look back um, and how I've changed, I feel like I've become a more compassionate, more patient, more conscious and more balanced. Um, yeah. Okay. And so now to the topic, um, while I feel being in the presence of a spiritual master, living spiritual master, like Amma, for example, is so impactful. Um, just for example, Amma, Amma prescribes daily meditation and selfless heart-based service by helping others. Um, which is also called savor in Sanskrit, um, to calm the mind and become more aware of our true nature. Um, but I, I noticed, I noticed while I practice meditation every day, and I am also of service, you know, when I can, um, I, I, I noticed that it is not always that easy to have a calm, peaceful mind. And many of you would agree, you know, like the mental chatter and, you, and things are just going on. It's not always easy to just. Um, I also noticed over the years, just like noticing sometimes the meditation is easier, sometimes not. I, I, I how um, useful for, 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 for meditating for me is the combination of my personal effort and my personal attitude towards life and towards practicing meditation and selfless service. Um, and the combination of that and also the attitude towards life of the people that I mostly spend time with and that are in my surrounding, that those two things actually impact my state of being the most. Um, it's not just one and other, it's, I feel like it's both. And so, um, and so then I would also notice that every time I would be in Amma's presence again, meditation would become so much more effortless and quieting the mental and emotional chatter easier. And yeah, and feeling deeply touched by the divine love in her presence. I feel my system gets recalibrated all the time again. 
And so, for example, while for some divine unconditional love and meditation might appear as a, like a little bit abstract, or it's just like a mental concept, I, I feel that Amar, as a living spiritual master, she infuses deeper meaning into those words. She can give people, I feel, um, a reference point um, of what unconditional love actually means, how it feels like, and how it looks like in action. And so that is the main reason why I feel being in the presence of a living spiritual master is actually is, is priceless, actually, in my opinion. So um, that's that's just what I wanted to share today, and I'm I'm open for any questions you might have. Mm. Oh, thank you so much, Jenniki. I feel really, really uplifted and it's bringing a whole lot of memories and actually a deeper understanding of what I'm going through, you know, and, and what I'm learning, it's putting it in terms that it, it's really, really been wonderful. Personal, this is my personal response. And um, I, I might say more later, but I think others might have questions or comments to make, so. Al. Let me unmute myself. Hi, thank you uh, for being with us today and for sharing. Um, I, I belong to a Buddhist group that does have a living mentor or master. Um, and some of the questions that come up in the group is, well, what happens when our sensei passes away? Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if that question comes up uh, in your with your friends that uh, practice, or however you call it, with Ama, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if she is a human being and she isn't going to be here at least in that form forever. Mm -hmm. So, do you, do you are you concerned about what might happen when, you, or will she be replaced by an, another successor master who will serve the purpose? Mm -hmm. I'd yeah. like to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, yeah. great question. Um. I feel, uh, sorry about the sound, is it disturbing, the sound in the background here? Um, I, can, I can hear you, I can hear you very well. That might be my sound, let me mute, because I've got sirens. I think we should all mute, unless yep. we're speaking. Oh, and a weed whacking going on here, so I can, you know what, I just quickly close the window, okay? I can't hear her weed whacking, but it must be distressing for her or, you know, distracting, not distressing. I still hear sirens. I, I think, think that should be better. Okay. Yeah, there's a chainsaw action. So yeah, great question. Um, I definitely have thought about that. Um, I feel... Um, I see, I feel like I'm going to be okay. <laughs> so, so um, I feel she being in, in the, in the presence of a living master like Ama is, is like having crutches or it's like, it's a support system, but, um, and, and, and I feel like as long as she is in her body, I will soak up as much as I can, you know? Um, just also, I, I, the way I learn is not only mentally, but also vibrationally. Um, everyone might be different there, but that's just how I learn the most. So I, sometimes she talks and I'm not even listening, <laughs> but, but I, I feel like um, she, she, she's planting a lot of powerful seeds um, in my being when I'm there. And, and I just have, I don't know how, how it's gonna be if I will be following another living spiritual master. I haven't thought about that, but, but I, I, I just trust that 
that um, things will unfold in a way that that it'll feel right and and um, and I, I know I will be, I'll be supported. Thank you very much. Yeah. Is Analia? Yes. So it's very interesting that you say this because um, I am a minister of the Fellowship of the Inner Light and our teacher passed away in 1994. And one of us, you know, his students became a disciple of Ama. <laughs> his name is Benjamin Miller and he lives in either New Mexico or Arizona. And I kind of lost touch with him, but I mean, what you're saying is exactly what happened to Benjamin. It's like, I'm sure that Ama has taught you to connect to the source. You are the source of love. I mean, you have your own terminal to the source of love, right? Like you're saying, you know, but it is nice. It's, it's true that when people of like vibration get together, it makes things easier to experience that vibration. So I think that's really great. And um, how she came here. Didn't Alma come here like a few years ago? To Hawaii? Yes. I don't think so. Um, she sent some of her uh, swamis sometimes um, to the island. OK. So maybe Benjamin came with one of those swamis, because I, I he, he said, we had just reconnected. He had been married to a dear friend of ours, of course, and she passed away. And so he was going through changes. But um, yeah. So what is the best way to learn from um, or just go online? Because to me, if I had a word for my religion, it would be love, you know, and what she's she sounds like the queen of it, <laughs> you know, like. The, <laughs> so I would like to learn more from her. Mm. So is that best to go on a web the websites like you were doing? Does she she teach or is it about her or does she teach you how to be in the energy, how to connect with that universal energy yourself through the holy breath or mm, mm. I would say both. She um operates on so many levels. There's people who who need all these different angles, you know, like some some need more of a, a mental input. Right. Others surely want meditation and want to just be mentally quiet. And so she, I feel like is is operating on all these different levels. So um you can go her main website is ama.org. You can also watch different YouTube videos to just get a, a better feeling. Also with the sound, it's it's more interesting. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I, I feel the way I got to know her was, I, I didn't know much about her when I actually first met her. Um, and, uh, but th that was just very helpful for me because I can have quite a, a strong mind sometimes and that can be in the way. It can be, you know, so um, my recommendation would always be if she comes on tour again right now, it's COVID time. We don't know exactly how things will be changing around this. Um, but if she comes to U.S. tour again, she um, the closest place where she comes um, to Hawaii is L.A., I would say, or San Francisco. Yeah. She has um, a tour stop in, in both of those cities. Uh, and to just just be there, and and also she she's um. What I want to say is she since she's addressing so many people at so many levels and and with so many preferences and and habits, uh, it is not. When you come, there will be a lot going on. So she's more. Um, exemplifying how 
to infuse your actions with love. So it's not just about like sitting silently on your meditation cushion and feel divine love, but to actually serve and do things right. in that attitude. So that's what you see on the outside, you know, for the mind, you just see like a lot going on. There's like, it's just like very interesting. When, when I saw her the first time, I was like, what's going on here? I was like experiencing this like serene silence and meditative atmosphere, but it was more like a divine circus, you know? <laughs> but over the years, I, I noticed I, I was able to see beyond that and to really tap into that feeling that I described that um, that I would experience after I would receive art, for example. And um, and that's on tour in the ashram. Things are a little bit more mellow. So I just wanted to add that. But yeah, ama.org and the YouTube videos are a great resource. I will <laughs> my phone. <laughs> Yeah. Hi, Janaki. Hi, Hi Janaki. Sonia. Hi, Sonia. Haven't seen you for a while. It's so good to see you. Are you on the island or are you in Germany? No, I'm on the island. Oh, okay. I read from the the intro that um, um, you came from an Osher family influence. I'm curious whether the Rajneesh, did Rajneesh have a strong following in Germany and is it still? Um, actually, yeah, he had quite a following in Germany. Um, I don't know what's going on now because I'm not involved in that scene. Um, but I, from what I'm getting, yeah, there's still quite a bit of people. But since he, I think he died in the early 90s or something, um, or late 80s, I forgot. Um, mm -hmm. Just ever since... Uh, uh, I think people, many have actually turned to Ama, <laughs> interestingly That's enough, it. even though yeah. it, it feels different, you know, they, like, like it seems to, that they both um, express themselves in a different way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, yeah, but I think the, the, yeah the the following that he had is just like it's it's not very organized you know it's um yeah but your but upbringing your upbringing uh, has had some uh, strong uh, indian spiritual influence huh also well, to Anna. yeah um yeah i think even though I'm, I'm not an Asho devotee myself, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I feel uh, just the fact that my parents were just talking about, they actually, they taught me meditation when I was young and I've been meditating regularly ever since, um, like since like I'm 12 or 13 or something. And it has helped, in, in those years, it has helped me to just stay more balanced like uh, there was like that 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 all it was you know like just I feel like I'm I'm actually a quite empathic person and um and then my childhood was a bit difficult in Germany and I feel like the meditation was just helping me to just like function better you know um so yeah, these concepts of meditation, and as I mentioned in the intro and the bio, like enlightenment, where all these like were just casually being talked about, and I feel that actually was planting a seed um, that then later became you know sprouted, and and I was actually really really interested. Thank you. And welcome. Any other questions? If, if um, nobody else does, I have a, have a question. Uh, I interestingly, it's the same question I had after watching, I think it was the Netflix series on Osho. Mm. And uh, although it was very interesting, I and they meditate and do other things, but I, I never 
quite got a sense of what the actual religion or philosophy was. And I, I know you didn't intend to, as you say, present a religion, but I'm just kind of wondering, there must be some fundamental belief system, which maybe you have expressed already. And I, I seem to be looking for more <laughs> as to what exactly, what, what, what is it based on? What the fundamental belief yeah. does it does it did it evolve from some other religion hinduism because she's from india etc et mm, i mean usually fun. these usually these teachers come from something <laughs> they, they don't and and they, and there's a philosophy involved too mm -hmm. but, uh, so i just wondered if you could adjust it just briefly you don't want yeah. to get into it too heavily yeah i i don't know how well versed i am in in, in that area but uh I mean, interestingly enough, both were coming from India and that most likely had an impact. And there is like, there's these like old, old scriptures. The, some people might have heard of the Bhagavad Gita, you know, um, and there's the Upanishad and like just, just thousands of old year scriptures that where ancient rishis have written down um, the spiritual insights and the way they see the world and um, the way they think humans should conduct themselves in order to experience the divine and God. And, um, and so from, I know that Hinduism is a world religion that also is kind of like uh, overlapping there or, or a spring from that, I don't know exactly, you know, if, uh, I don't know enough about Hinduism, actually. Um, but I know that there's these, that Amma talks a lot about the Bhagavad Gita. Um, I know that Sri Ramana Maharshi, I don't know if some of you might have heard of him. He also would recite, uh, like cite scriptures in the Bhagavad Gita. And there's, there's a, so the concept of, of, um, so that's just kind of the, a, a little bit the foundation and then um, and that but I think the way I understand it just in short the essence is exactly that of, of experiencing one's true nature and um, I think that's just all what it boils down to <laughs> and there were like all these scriptures created to to point from many different angles to exactly that. Um, that's just my, my understanding. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Religion's not easy to explain. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you, Janaki. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Can Amma teach you what she does? Can Amma teach choose what she does? Can, can Amma teach you teach me. what she does? What she does, okay. Um, can you, like, is a hug from you the same as a hug from her? Um, she intends to teach that, yes, that she, she can. So yeah, um, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. All hugs are equal. Huh? Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, her mission is to also teach how to become like her, actually. And that doesn't mean it's very easy necessarily, but it maybe can for some people, depending on their habits and the attitude in life and um yeah and to what extent they unshakably are are in connection with divinity and these are all you know just my words um but yeah that's that what she also is trying to do to support people to to get established in 
in, in their true nature. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, I've been working and I'm here for that small town coffee. I, oh. I uh, my schedule changed a couple months ago and uh, I'm at work. So nice to hear of your story with Ama. There has been a lot of people speak of her in such um, a tangible way. Can, can you share with me uh, or with us like, uh, an, an experience of the profound, if, if you have ever seen this in her mix? I've, I've heard people just be so moved by her presence and a hug from her. Have you experienced this yourself? Yeah, I shared a little bit earlier, but perhaps you didn't hear that. Um, but yeah, I I do have a experience um, feeling deeply, deeply touched in my heart, and uh, and feeling a profound stillness and peace in my being. Right, especially right after the hug, and. Um, that's just for me the most important part. You know, you, you also hear about stories where like little miracles are happening. Um, that's definitely also nice to listen to. Um, but yeah, to me, that's the most profound thing. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's really noisy here, so I've been keeping it muted. I also want to say to the rest of IROC, I really appreciate um, yeah. the continuity here. So, no, I've been absent. Last thing you said? Oh, even though I've been absent. But oh, thank okay. You, mm -hmm. Thanks, Jonathan. And as a matter of fact, I will be going to India in the end of June. And even though if you listen to the news in India, it's a bit chaotic. Um, but where we are going um, to Amas Ashram, uh, it's the ashram itself is a, is a safe zone, so to speak. Um, she has most people in the ashram that are living there permanently, they're vaccinated. And, um, and she, she's very careful about who's coming in and out. And um, yeah, so it's, it's just actually when we arrive, uh, we will be in, in, yeah, in two week quarantine on ashram premises, but uh, you know, but we can't leave our room. Um, gonna be very interesting but but I I feel also because Alma usually she's become so popular there's like usually thousands of people around her even in her ashram when she's in her ashram there's so many visitors coming every day um but now is a time where there's not so many people and um so that was one of the reasons why my partner and I decided to go at this time um, to kind of take advantage of this opportunity to, to have a more intimate time around her and um, before things are opening up again. And so the ashram actually sponsored a, a special student visa for us because right now you cannot get a regular tourist visa. Um, so yeah. But I just throw that in to let you know. Yeah, thank you. Just am I H Harry, I don't hear Harry, you have to unmute yourself. 
Have a great time in India. I know the summer is a very special time in India. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just, uh, are, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just so lovely, because I know in, in the Brahma Kumari teaching, the teaching we get from the one we call Baba, which means God, and it's through this instrument, Brahma Baba. So the one Baba, the, super, the divine, and then Brahma Baba. But he's been saying a whole lot of things that are coming to my mind. Like one is that in these days, people don't want talk anymore. And, I, and I, it, I'm just interpreting that people aren't really that interested in what's your religion or your, you know, your theology, but everyone wants an experience. Mm -hmm. You want to experience your own nature and to experience love. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the real thing. And that seems the whole essence of what you're getting at and that you know, and, and also you saying that the interference to that is that we have so much junk going on, you know, dealing with our stuff and matter and all this, that we are not aware of that. And just to clear that away, um, it's just so beautiful to see one another in that way. And, you know, just to see the people that she was hugging, like just removing all the covers, either covers through self-defense or through, you know, aggression, just being um, naked, you know, and themselves. It's so beautiful. And I found that in events with the Brahma Kumaris, we have drishti, especially we had this ceremony in August when it wasn't COVID, when people would come and, and you'd share long drishti, same as Ama. And, you know, it, it just almost broke my heart because you'd look into people's eyes and they would be naked, you know, and you'd feel so privileged, you know, to see the beauty in each one. Mm. And mm. Uh, that's what we all want. We don't want a religion. And I think it's just very significant for us as an organization, the Interfaith Roundtable. And if we read like what it's supposed to be about is, you know, we share our difference. I don't think people care that much. You know, I don't think there's that great an interest in beliefs, but it's in being love you know and being the eternal beautiful self you know and i just found it really uplifting you know to think of those things and i was reminded too once of uh, an experience i had when i'd been in the brahma kumari knowledge for several years and i was en route to our ashram in uh, rajasthan i was in delhi and that's where they had an office. And one of the main instruments who in fact channels our founder, God through Brahma Baba, she's just a lovely lady. She just very recently left the body, you know, and that was, we've had our great, you know, daddies, senior sisters and brothers all leaving the body, they're all going. And this question Analia brought up is what happens when the great, you know, leader or leaders move on and it just seems like it means we all have to step up you know we all have to step up because we all have that divine spark but i had this wonderful incident when i didn't even know that this daddy goals are that i know so well from being up in front of thousands of people channeling god you know that she was there just in her you know just traveling and i just happened to walk out and she was walking out of the office out, out in Delhi. And uh, I don't really know her personally at all, but she just looked at me with a smile of such recognition. It just about knocked me over because I felt what you're describing, like this divine love out of the blue. It's like, oh my gosh, I've never, ever, ever felt love like that. You know, and it was like, it wasn't rehearsed or anything. She just was on her way from one building to another doing her business, getting ready to travel, you know, and oh, I was totally knocked out, you know, and it was just that same feeling. So I really identify with, with that and to think that we all have this love within us to share, you know, I just, 
it's just very wonderful. <laughs> so I just wanted to thank you. And, and also, you know, to be careful that we don't get dependent on a guru because a lot of people start, you know, you know, the guru, 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 guru. And that's not the point, you know, the guru doesn't want us to focus on them, but to, to find ourselves, you know? <laughs> so it's very uplifting and informative, but very uplifting talk, feeding the heart as well as the head. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank you. So we're approaching the hour. Does anyone, I mean, we can go on. We're a very flexible, casual orga organization, actually. Does anyone want to share anything or say anything else about the topic before we get on to all our business items? Or, yes, An Analia? Is there, is there a group on island that, um studies her work together? Janaki? Um, oh. Yes. Yeah, there's sometimes, um, there's a, a small Ama Satsang group here. It's not so regular. It's more happening, I think, on Maui. Um, but yeah, there are, uh, there's like a handful of people <laughs> that come together sometimes. But it's more, you know, it's not like, okay, every Wednesday we meet or something. That's it's fine. more like, okay, That's we meet. Um, do you have time? Please welcome, you know. <laughs> and then there's like some, some, some devotional singing together and a little bit of meditation and, um, and like so a little bit of satsang, just like some spiritual talk. Um, yeah. Is it open to the public or is it closed? It's kind of, I don't know exactly. <laughs> it's so private, you know. Um, it's just by invitation, I would say, you know. Um, if you are, I can connect you with someone who's here the most stable, you know, like just like really living here. Yeah, I would like that. Yeah, yeah, you can, um, if you if you send, give me like your email, you can, um, in the chat, um, just give me your email address and then I can email you okay. and connect you with um, Jonathan, like another Jonathan, uh, who he has been holding the most, um, you know, gathering. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Wonderful. So, so Jenny K. Also, it would be nice maybe for us to meet Ashut sometimes too, because he's he's been many five years. My goodness, and he's had his own personal. Because I think also I I just know him a little bit, but. He had a very challenging childhood and a lot of difficulties and experienced a lot of healing through Amma's love, you know, and I think that's a, a good story. <laughs> it is, yes, powerful. Yes, yeah. I mean, so many of us have some trauma or another from childhood, some more than others. And, um, so, and for some, it's so to the extent that they're actually having PTSD and can't really be calm. Or, or just trying to meditate is just like freaking them out or something, you know. Um, he, he, he's healed a lot with um, being around Amar actually. And he's, he's attributing a, basically, like he's just indefinitely grateful for her because he feels he can actually function as like a normal person because of her, her support. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. another time, yeah. <laughs> so Jenny Kay, would you like to stay on a bit? And you're very welcome without any insult to leave. And Sonia is kind of a visitor, but Sonia is always part of us. So if anyone wants to leave before we talk business, you're welcome to. 
but you're extremely welcome just to stay with all our discussion issues that we have coming okay. up. We have to go. Um, right. But yes, I when I come back from India, I would love to, um, you know, just be a little bit more, uh, you know, just, just get to know the group better. Nice. And um, yeah, thank you. And, and I also see in the chat, I, I get the message from Analia. Yeah. And there's also something from Sonia. Oh, how do you spell Ama's name? Yeah, so A-M-M-A, -M -M -A, very simple. Um, mm -hmm. Which is actually just the, in India, everyone, every mother is Ama. <laughs> it's just a word for mother, you know? <laughs> yeah. But she's like the Ama, the hugging saint, or Amachi, or some call her also Mata Amrita Nanda Mai. That's also like her full name. So maybe I just put that in the chat as well. Oh, I'm, I need to send it to everyone. One moment. Mata Amrita Nanda Mai. Yeah, that's also her name in the chat. Yeah. And, and as I said, Janaki, it would be lovely if you and Ashut could um, send something. You could do, always do it through me, but you have all the addresses here to Rabbi Rob, who runs our website and blog. You could make a blog item or send us something to go on to Facebook, which is a little more quick and informal. But, okay. Yeah. But if it's on the blog, it's quite nice because then it's out there in Google and people can, you know, find us. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand. For SEO, we have uh, fresh content all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So thank you very much for listening thank and you. having me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank and you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Om Shanti. Thank you. Om Shanti. Bye bye. Om Shanti. <laughs> Om Shanti. So we have Sonia has departed and Jenike has departed. Is nobody has anyone else departed? Were we eight before or was there someone else? Um, that's it well deborah sister deborah came oh yeah she yeah. left a while ago yeah i think she was really pushing it to even be here when as when she was you know so that's good okay so we have hari wendy manfred analia al jonathan al jonathan jenicky and deborah Right, wonderful. So I have the agenda in front of me. Do you have the agenda in front of you, Hari? I do not, but I know you do. I do, so I'll introduce the things. Um, hey, Jay, I want yes. to speak about that because you said the agenda is on the website. And I yes. where? It's, I it's under meetings and minutes, Analia. Meetings and minutes, okay. I went, to, maybe I was looking at meetings. Or maybe it was no. It's me. It's one section. Meetings and minutes up on the pull down menu on our front page. On the top. Minutes are there, but the agenda should be on top of the minutes. Okay. Yeah. I'll go there again. I still have it set up, so should get there. Okay. I I imagine Rabbi Rob has almost definitely put it up. Yeah, it's it's up. I'm looking at it on my oh, okay. phone. Okay. Business meeting agenda. That that's it. Business meeting agenda for agenda yes. for our community monthly meeting. I got it. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Thanks. Okay. So we've had our welcome and our speaker and business meeting. The next item, I skipped from two to four. That was clever. Four three. All right. Never mind. Four three four. Okay. The numbers are wonky. So the first number four, annual nominations for officers of board of directors and new BOD members. Al, could you take that because you're the technical person who knows the proper way of doing things? Okay. 
I'll, I'll just go from our bylaws. Uh, basically, yeah. and, and we talked about this uh, a me, uh, la last month, but uh, traditionally, e even before we had bylaws, May was the, the designated month where we'd ask uh, for nominations to run for the board. And then in June, uh, hold an actual election. And of course it gives us time to put uh, the names of nominees uh, either on the website or send it out with the meeting notice so people know who's interested in running. Um, and we have, uh, I mean, the way we are set up now, we have uh, slots for nine board of directors members. Uh, at the current, we have seven people serving. Four of those positions come with specific responsibilities like uh, Hari and Jonathan are the two co-chairs. Uh, Wendy is our uh, secretary and Suzanne is our treasurer. And these are the people that have the most specific responsibilities. I guess the rest of us are kind of at large, although Rob just got the title of uh, digital uh, administrator, is that correct? D digital media? It was here. digital media administrator, but he prefers if he could change it to digital marketing, digital marketing. So can I just get a vote? Is that okay with everyone? Because it's shorter. It, is everyone happy if we call them digital marketing? Can you, you just know, when I, I, when I, it's not a big deal as long as we all know what, what it means. It just struck me when I, because you put it on the, uh, I think the last thing that was sent out, you, you put it yeah. next to his name. And I thought, well, what is, what is he, what are we marketing? Yeah, I, my I, I mean, it sounded like we were selling something. So No, so. marketing just means I'm not selling to make money, but it just means letting people know what's going on. It's like okay. communication. But he said that that actually is accurate because he's run lots of businesses and he, you know, he said that's a, 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 the right title. So and it's I, digital I marketing administrator. No, it's two words. Di and if Dig you notice, it went digital marketing administrator so long, it knocks out all the right. lineup. <laughs> right, I, I noticed that. So yeah, thank you for explaining. I think this is another, probably another term that's uh, uh, been invented later in my life to go, <laughs> go along with technical responsibilities. So right. I'm thinking of marketing in another way. And he's he's probably got the more technologically correct understanding of what a digital marketer might be. If he markets joining uh, IROC, that's all to the good anyway. But I just yeah. thought I would ask. So he, he uh, so it's only Analia and I who don't have a specific title, uh, which is fine, especially since I'm, I'm coming, I'm not running again for the board. And I understand, Wendy, you are not running again. I'm stepping down as secretary, but I'm willing to stay as board. Do okay. we have to like re-vote in everyone? Like, like we have to vote. We vote yeah, like- well, Yes, yes. I mean, I, I know that a lot of what's in the bylaws uh, it, it seems rather formal for a group that's as informal as we are, but there should be some responsibility, sense of responsibility. Uh, you know, like I'm, determined that I came to this meeting today and I'll come in June because I've committed myself to the uh, one year term. Um, you know, it's not that people maybe necessarily need those kinds of prompts to do what they're supposed to do, but uh, I, I think in going on into the future and understanding, if I agree, I'm gonna serve one year, or as I mentioned, it, 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 that's, that's the minimum for uh, I shouldn't say the minimum, but that's for every new director that runs, they serve one year. If they run again and get elected, they can serve three years. But it se seems like that is uh, kind of an optional thing. It says they may serve an ad additional three-year terms. So I don't know whether we put that on uh, on the ballot, so to speak, or each director just specifies, each nominee just specifies they want to do one year again or they want to do three. I mean, it's nice to, eventually it'd be nice to have staggered terms so not everybody would be running. There wouldn't be a potential for a complete changeover in the board every year. 
that's what a lot of organizations do is, is stagger the terms. But anyway, if we want to just do one year again and see how it goes, that's fine too. So, so Wendy, you were you were going to run, but not as treasurer. No, not as I'm. I, I'm stepping down from the secretarial position. So we need secretary someone to need someone to take on secretary. And also, I'd be willing to step down from board, but I'm willing to stay on board. So, uh, on board. So. Uh, whatever's like, I mean, assuming IROC will continue for a long time and we're so few, <laughs> maybe we need to step down so we can step up again. But I, have we only, we've only done one year, haven't we, all of us? Because yes, and under the bylaws, we've done one. We've done one year, so. Yeah, okay. and yeah, so uh, I, I, I think uh, Rabbi Rob, he sent an email uh, before the meeting, sent several, but one of them he said he, I think he said he would be willing to serve again. I don't know if anybody has his email in front of them. I can look at it, but uh, yeah, he has a long message which can come up on the next item on the agenda. Yeah. Has anybody heard from anybody? I mean, I, I should ask who's here. Hari, are you running again? I uh, would not. I would like not to run for an officer position this time. And I talked to Suzanne and she would like to not, she'd like to, she's got other stuff on her plate right now. And she would like to not run as well. I'll stay on the board, but um, I'd love to have a, a new uh, co-chair uh, step up and do that. I, I've done it for three years. And I think that's probably more than enough for an organization like this. And Suzanne, uh, I don't remember her, the specifics of her her message to us, but uh, did she say she did? What, wasn't clear whether she was going to come off the board. She said, "I'm going to be busy for the next few months, but I'll be available to write checks." Right. I don't yeah, know. If I that... think I, I, I don't want to speak for her, but she really didn't want to be the treasurer anymore, and uh, I wouldn't doubt if she'd stay on the board to keep us going if we need her. But she's really busy with her new uh, new business. So what is uh, your business? Do, does anyone know? It's something to do with tourists and co rental cars and stuff like that. I don't know much more about it. Oh. But I know that her and her husband are like really busy right now. They're just starting it. So oh, yeah. they're they're like new teenagers starting a business, and they're pretty busy <laughs> till the end of the summer. In fact, when I talked to her uh, the other day, uh, yesterday. Uh, she she suggested that we take the, that we all take the summer off and get back together in October. That was her suggestion. Not a bad idea. Except that we completely <laughs> missed the International Day of Peace, which is in September. I I would suggest you, you take this. Her. We I think I would suggest we take this subject up next month when we have, we'll find out who the board's gonna be and they should decide whether we're gonna have a summer off or not. That makes sense. That well, uh, that's not right. I don't really think that's a board decision now. I think that's a management decision that, that can be made through the members. I don't think, um, I don't think that's really, uh, I think that's, more of a leadership decision is something we can all vote on and we can all be involved with. Well, we, we can, Harry, we can anyway, because the, our bylaws state that the only vote is, is the board of directors. However, it's this, specifically we put this in there for this reason that the board of directors will listen to what the opinions are at the community meeting. So in yeah. effect, Anybody yeah. who's in the next month's community meeting can express their opinion. Yeah. And the board can follow or not, but the board's going to be part of it. So it's, so don't, well, don't, well, yeah, I don't think we have to fear that the board is going to take over something from the membership. We are the membership. <laughs> we are it. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I mean, maybe someday in the distant future, when we have a hundred members, active members, it'll, We'll have to make adjustments. So I think uh, I accounted for everybody, myself, Jonathan, and Susan. One, two, three, four. What about five, Jonathan? Six. Jonathan, can you hear us? Uh, yeah. 
Al, can you Let's ask him? Ask John, him. Jonathan, we're, we're uh, talking to each board of directors member, asking them if they'll be willing to run for another one year term. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to run for another term. Uh, I, I noticed that there was a significant uh, jump ship call, so I'll hang in there. Great. Okay. That's good. Oh, Jonathan. I, I'm, one of, I'm one of the jump shippers, but I like to swim, so there's a there's a compensation for it. So Wendy, Rob, Hari, Suzanne, Jonathan, Al. Analia. 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 Of I course. Stay on the board. And I thought. Uh, do you want to run for an officer position? Well, you know, it seems like I have kind of a job. And it's like whenever there's an event, it's like I get involved in that, you know, and I, because I think, and I'm also kind of, you know, like I announced to URI our, our, um, uh, National Day of Prayer, and that was went out on URI, and you know, on my Facebook page, and and 122 people, you know, went to look at it. I think, or, but I know Facebook says that they only log at three seconds to count it, you know, or something like that. But anyway, um, I I feel like, okay, I Rock is here to serve, right? I mean, I like that's what Amma was talking about. You don't just sit and feel all lovey-dovey and everything it's like putting yourself out and and you know one of the things we do is we bring a lot of people together you know and of of different different venues and different um belief systems so i i'm a, i don't want a title i'm not saying i want a title but i'm i think that's a really important part of what we do and i'm willing to work toward that uh, may I nominate you as co-chair? Uh, no, not, and I'll tell you why not this year. My husband's mother is, uh, we just went to see her. We were supposed to fly back on Tuesday. She's 91 years old in extreme pain. All the cartilage in her spinal bone are gone. And she fell the day before we left. Mm. broke the hip the feet the ball on the femur just broke right off you know in the pelvis she had to have surgery and she's going into a rehab today joshua's flying home today but we just feel unsettled we just feel like we have to go and we had scheduled i mean like the grandkids are coming next week monday sunday actually and uh, we scheduled a vacation. We even bought a car up when we were, we had just spent three weeks with her and, you know, went to see friends too, but to go on a trip, you know, just to, to see this guy I was telling you about, Benjamin, who was, is a student of, of Alma and, and different people. But so I just don't feel I'm settled enough to do that as a co-chair, but thanks for the thought, Hari. I am committed to this group, have been for a long time. You indeed have. You've been very committed and I've very appreciated all the work you do efficiently. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Okay, let, let me go down this again. So, Wendy, you would run again, but, don't, but not as the secretary. Yes, I don't want the responsibility of minutes and reminding people. Yep. Okay. We need, somebody, we need someone to do that job. And I really feel I like, oh, you know, the needs are, I have to do it, but it's been highly stressful for me because my brain is just, I get very confused and it, it's like a much more huge burden than in fact it, it should be, you know? And well, you, you, do, you do a lot. And I was going to suggest that uh, uh, not, not every secretary that has been here in the years that I've been here has done the minutes. You know, uh, so I think that's true. Uh, I think maybe, you're I, maybe I'm wrong about that, but it, I it's the only one. That... I was the only one who, when I was chair, who also had to write the minutes and take yeah. the secretary's position, yeah. as far as I know. Yeah. So like, you did a great I job. Think, I, I, oh. I, I would I would say this because uh, I've thought about it, but I'm not thinking entirely clearly. But 
I feel that as time as, as the year has gone on, uh, Wendy has taken on more and more responsibility. I, I don't think it should be the secretary. The secretary should take minutes. That's probably one of their primary jobs. But the secretary, I don't think is necess it's necessary. They make up the agenda. I would think that's more the co-chair's responsibility. Uh, and, and as far as the communicating of it, um, I think Rob has sort of taken on part of the communication. Am I wrong? Or is, is still you, Wendy, you're doing all the communication. Rob is totally brilliant. He catches on to things immediately and he does things and he explains things clearly. He's just amazing. Um, and he does know what, and if he had more time, he could probably be co-chair, secretary and treasurer. You know, he could do all three, but he, he is a business plus he's very active pastor and doing all, you know, all, he's the rabbi. So he, he has very, very limited time and he fits us in, you know. But he actually needs help. I was going to try to help him with um, getting into the website and making changes, but I just get into this state of confusion and I, I just couldn't do it, you know, like the spirit's willing, but the brain is not able. It's very frustrating. So I all had offered to do that, but I just, I just can't. So somebody needs to help him as well. He's been very helpful. Uh keeping our uh, Zoom thing together. I've been asking oh questions every time. Yes. But anyway. So, um, right. Looks like we'll have elections next next month one way or another. Right, and people, people can, you can still solicit other people, you know, before you take the vote next month. I, I did. Mean, at, the, at, the yeah. at the meeting, at the meeting, at the meeting itself. In other words, nomination, new nominations can, can be made. So we might be thinking uh, making some phone calls to specific people between now and and then. I don't recall with Jonathan whether I know he agreed to serve another term. Did did that include being the co-chair? I don't recall if I asked him specifically. I think he was including both, but if Harry steps down, it means he's the only chair, you know? Right. So that means he'll have to take total responsibility, but I don't know if he's able to do that because he seems to have issues arise a lot, you know, and it's his responsibility to do something. And so I, I just- It's hard to reach him. It's hard, I have tried to reach him and I- Yeah, I've had a tremendous difficulty communicating with him. Yeah, you know, I, would, a, I would, go ahead now. Go ahead, Hari, go ahead. I, I, I'll do whatever I can for IROC. I just feel like IROC needs a new leader and um, somebody who's more involved than I am. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of retiring out of a lot of activities like that. And I'm also taking on other you things. Can, you can't that. do that. I already started doing that. You want, Al, Al showed me how to do it. I, I swim in <laughs> back of Al frequently. And he, he says, yeah, it's time to retire and let other, let the younger folks like Analia take over. <laughs> Jump right in there. Well, you know. Harry, I'm younger... older than you are. How old are you, Harry? How oh old? God, oh, I'm only sixty-two. <laughs> well, I'm seventy-two, and I'm. Yeah, but you're, you got that youthful activity. You're full of Attitude. divine. She's full of divine love. Yes. Divine yeah. love. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, look, uh, look, you know, ser getting back to seriously. Uh, I kind of anticipated we might hit this point uh, too. In, the, in, the, in the organization's history, recent history. And it may come about that uh, there, without changing titles or adding titles, you might want to reorganize the responsibilities. So I know there was one period, uh, again, it's, it was enough years back that I can't remember how long it lasted, but I. I think Analia was taking minutes. I was taking minutes whenever the secretary couldn't be there. So it may be, but now of course that probably shouldn't be the case with treasurer because that somebody needs to keep their eye on the bank balance and where the checks are going. But- uh, Okay, here's the big one. You're welcome. Uh, 
Does anybody want to order? Does anybody want to order anything from Jonathan? Yeah, I like a, a double toasted bagel. Do you have pumpernickel? No pumpernickel today. Uh oh. Cinnamon raisin. Maybe maybe we've lost Jonathan. There you go. I know. At the moment, I had the the volume on. I apologize because I reconnected. I got bumped out, but. Jonathan, I, I, you said you would run for another term. Would that be as a co-chair? Yeah, uh, well, uh, I mean, do we have a chair? No. Well, we, we have two co-chair positions. And right now we, we have, Hari is not going to run for re-election. Nobody else has said they want to be a co-chair. So you would, you if would you do, you might be the, the singular co-chair and therefore the chair. <laughs> So that's that's kind of what I heard. Um, there was a bump in pay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, it's, I'll it's make sure to tell my girlfriend. Uh, she'll that? appreciate that. Hey, I'll Jonathan. Make sure to tell my girlfriend. That. Jonathan, she could be the co-chair. Yeah. Jonathan, oh. you're you're young. Do you have anyone? You get into you know different organizations. Say, is there anyone else from the Center for Spiritual Living who might be interested in being involved with IROC? I mean that you know, you know different people. We need to get some younger blood because this is going to continue. You know, you look but at it. Ira. Suzanne's going out. Harry's going out. You know, Wendy's tired and Al's, Al's going out. And so Al's jumping shit. I can't right now. I can't take on more than just some. A naked board member person yeah. <laughs> so with no titles so john jonathan would you like to run for not just board of directors but as the co-chair i i thought he said yes to that i thought he said yes okay uh -oh. hey sorry uh <laughs> i made it back I just wonder if John, if I could go for co-chair and Jonathan could be secretary, because the co-chair doesn't do very much and the secretary has to do a lot. <laughs> the the coach, co well, the co-chairs in the past have done a lot, yeah. not everyone. But if there was a co-chair that didn't do much, their partner co-chair did a lot. That's my experience. So there's always something uh, to think about. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, everybody's, you know, different in a way, but uh, Jonathan, my, my own personal feeling when I was co-chair, I think I was co-chair with Analia. That was the only time I was co-chair, uh, but yeah. my feeling but always, was, that. Anyway, always yeah. was that uh, if anything well, needed I, to be done I, and there yeah. was nobody else to do it, that as co-chair, I needed to see it got done somehow. So, uh, but obviously your ability to delegate helps <laughs> helps you and the organization a lot. So I, I think it's going to be a learning experience for the, the new board and you'll figure out how to how to get everything done without killing anybody. And I'll, I'll be praying for you. Shall we go on to the rest of the agenda and then come back? I think, I think so, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, I think the National Day of Prayer, it says in the agenda, firstly, a vote of thanks and congratulations to Analia and Rob, who basically organized and put this all together. Um, and just in any comments, because I think it was absolutely terrific, you know, wonderful, and we have it to last now. Analia, do you have any comments to make about the experience and the product? It took a lot longer than I thought, you know, to get this all done. I'm looking yeah. at it right here because it was like, I think I would call someone and they would, you know, or I send out an announcement and they'd reply and I wouldn't hear anything. So then I'd email them personally and then I call them and then, then things would come in and then had to give it to Rob. And I mean, it, it just was, you know, uh, it, it was fine. I was able to do it, but it, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And I mm. felt good about sending it to URI. And I also feel that it's a presence that we have. I was just committed to making 
an example of how we bring people together here, including the mayor. I was so happy when he said he'd do a proclamation and he provided his own prayer. I mean, I was elevated by this. I wasn't even here. We left the fifth. So, you know, but I'd read it and I think pretty much everyone was in. But, um, you know, I'd, I'd contact somebody and they were going to contact somebody and then they, they didn't get a reply from them and then they didn't contact me. So then I had to contact someone else. But I mean, that is just what happens, you know, I guess, as far as this goes. But, um, you know, it's here now. We have it and we have a prototype for something if we ever want to do something like this again. Rob was amazing. You know, like people would send things. I would tell them to send them to him. Because like, why send them to me and then send them to him? He would let me know. I'd say, okay, send it to Rob, you know, so he can work on it. And he did. And like every, every evening, you know, he had to work in the day, but in the evening he'd put these things in and worked on it. Luckily over the weekend, he had some time, I think Sunday. And we were still getting things from IROC people, you know, at that you know, at that lat late date, I would say, but um, I don't know how many people saw it. I don't have that, but I noticed that Rob emails, I didn't get to look at it before the meeting, but he emailed yeah. his part of this meeting. So I could go to email. Do you want to, do you want to look it up and read it? I have it in front of me, or do you want me to? Oh, you can, go, if you have it, go ahead. Okay, he has the link. Um, and then he says, this is my final design on the website page consisted of coordinating text color font size and stylized separators between the prayers. I also published a blog post about National Day of Prayer, the website. Oh, and this is about the analytics you were just mentioning. The website doesn't have Google Analytics, which would tell us how many site visitors we have and the page oh. they go on. This is on my list to ask William about. So he's going to sort that, right? And then he goes on, I updated Facebook three to four times daily with a prayer and used special font and background color for each update. I also shared the blog post, the, mail's, the mayor's proclamation, and created an event page for NDOP. On the event page, I paid Facebook $10 to boost the event for more exposure. This is a donation to IROC from me. Thank you, Rob, you know, in your absence. And then Facebook gives us tracking. And it says, he says, they show, Facebook shows that all of the updates together were viewed 122 times and 33 people went from Facebook to the website. These are unique visitors. Each person IP address is only counted once. So possibly some of those 33 went more than one time, but they'd only count the first time. So it's 33 different people, not like one person going a lot of times. Election of officers today. Um, shall I read that now? Okay, you can throw my name in the hat. I'm okay with the digital marketing title. Also, before you consider me, I would ask for a one year extension to the year I just served because I live in Kalaheo. I will only be available on Zoom and not in person. Yeah, and that's important to take into consideration that if we go back, we hopefully will go back live, but we need to learn how to have a Zoom link because Rob is an integral part of this group and others, you know, that wouldn't be able to travel. Um, and then as I, I put on the I put on the agenda, this is his response to me saying he, you know, he would like someone to help but he says, assistance with the website. I saw this on the agenda, thank you. But unless a volunteer knows WordPress, I don't think it would end up helping because I don't have the time to train them. So he doesn't really want someone helping unless they're pre-trained and know exactly what to do. So forget that one. And then as for YouTube channel, he says, it's on my list for a summer project, but I haven't started it yet. 
And then this is um, Suzanne's issue. We'll have to wait till Suzanne makes an appearance if she does. She is she she volunteered to get a bio for all the members of the. Um, she might want to withdraw that, but we'll see what she says. But Susan, all a bio for all the board members, and then subscribe feature on website. This is it's also on my list for William to ask for a subscribe button. So people can sign up on the website to get IROC blog updates and the monthly MailChimp, et cetera. So that's in the process between him and William. And then Hari has posted a blog post, which there's a link. And he says, I look forward to seeing you in June because if I can't be here today, and he obviously couldn't, have a happy holiday weekend. Shabbat Salaam. Shabbat Shalom, Rabbi Rob. So that's Rob's report. Yeah, great. Can I make a, a brief media report? Yes. Yes. This, uh, some of you already know this. This was letter to the editor appeared in the uh, Garden Island. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, good. I wasn't here, I, so I didn't. I, fo I followed the stream method. And instead of sending it into an editor or an individual reporter, hoping they'd do something good with it, I just sent a letter to the editor. And as they did with stream, with the longer letters, they put it right at the top. So that was good. And uh, I also put a free, free ad in the heartbeat of Kauai. Usually I pay for their fast beats, but because the event, the, the details of the event and, uh, you know, weren't really settled until se several days before the event, there wasn't really time to promote more widely, at least by my way of thinking. Uh, Annalie already said that she, she posted it on the URI website. I send it to a lot of members in our SGI Buddhist organization. I think a few of them watched or among the 122 that went to the Facebook site. That's right. um, did, did, uh, Ron, did Ron Wiley get a notice or a call? Yes, he said he did. He said he would tell the world. Okay, he, he, and, he, and he usually does. I know. He's our own version of divine love. I love yeah. him, I know, I love that. Okay. And that, so, th so that was it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and MailChimp, um, Suzanne, and where's, Hari, are you there? <laughs> He's drowning. He's drowning in quicksand. Um, <laughs> Hari and Suzanne had a plan that they were going to get together with Jonathan and help him um, rationalize the mailing list and whatever else help was needed to get that going because the statistics are in last month's minutes about that you know we don't really it's not a very useful list and there are people that we are friends with that are not on that list because I don't think Jonathan's able to subscribe somebody by adding a name I don't know they have to subscribe themselves on the website, I think. I'm not sure about that, but Hari, you, you and Suzanne, did you do that? That you said you would? You're muted. Well, we said we would do it was to encourage Jonathan to send it out through MailChimp. Neither Suzanne and I know anything about MailChimp. Right. So all, so, we, all we agreed to do was what we did was encourage him to send it out through MailChimp. And he replied that he really didn't have time to do it. So you did it? No, oh. I didn't send it out through MailChimp. No, we you didn't send it from your... Did you oh. get... I didn't get it. one that had the MailChimp logo on it. So I think either he did or you got the no. MailChimp logo on it. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> send out any notice because I didn't want to send out a duplicate. Notice on top of your business serving customers, so we can't ask him anything. Um, so, uh, but you know, that's something when I'm not secretary, I'm I don't know, I just it's just not my area. But 
you know, I did explain what the problem is with MailChimp. There's just these hundreds of addresses that we'd have no clue who they are. Just people who came to an event and put down their name on a list. Right, and we right. have no idea. We have no names with them. They could be off island. They could be tourists that just put their name down. So anyway, that's nothing happens on that. But, but anyway, so we need that. And treasurer's report, Suzanne's not here. Um, Hari, have you organized, uh, if we can go to Anini Beach as a social group? I wanted to talk to you all before I, before I made the reservation. When I went in last month to talk to them, they said they weren't scheduling any public events yet. Right. So right okay. after the meeting, I talked to them. But I wanted to talk to you all before I did anything again, you know? Yeah, well. So they said so nothing. Okay, so we'll put that on abeyance, right? Uh, and any social gathering, and uh, and then all these possible discussions that we don't have. Do, do, do any of those things? These are things that have come up in the past, but I don't. I think I don't think there's anything on that list. We need to talk about, except this thing about abandoning, I mean, uh, having a holiday from Cairo. But I, I think we need to meet, meet, meet next month to have our elections and complete our one year term. You know, we need to meet next month. I think. Didn't we, didn't we get an email from Dan saying that we had $410 in the. Oh, do we? We, we have we have she about, sent an email, didn't she? Yeah, she sent an email, and we have about four hundred and something dollars in our account. Right, and that she, if we didn't get a secretary, I mean a treasurer, she would be willing to write checks. Right. So I don't know what checks she needs to pay. I mean, it's like an annual post office box. I think that's been done. Yeah. That's been done. Yeah. That's been done. Right. Oh, and by the way, I just did our I did our tax return last month and uh, we're all set for that for a year. Okay. Great. Thank good. you. Actually, so thank my wife. She, my wife helped me with that and she was a big help. So we're still a legit 501c3 nonprofit. That's good. Absolutely. Would she okay. like to run for treasurer? No. <laughs> nope. In the Sikh religion, the no, husband no, no, answers no. all such questions. Like yeah, she's, she's told me already. She's okay. <laughs> the people with the heart don't have the skills, or people with the skills don't have the time, or something. You know, it's like, <laughs> like that. we're incomplete human beings. Well, we'll see what we we're, we're evolving, human. Let me put it positive way. We're still evolving. Yeah. I think I'd call it retiring, but yeah. Retiring. Yeah, I have to do that. Okay, so. Uh, um, Hari, can you make, um, do you want to make a, a, a doable proposition for, uh, did you want to halt you and Suzanne and Al discussed having a holiday, like a non no meetings for a while, and that would mean we would would not have a national international day of peace, which well, definitely, well, definitely well, mean. And it's like, on. slow down, everybody, slow down. I talked to Suzanne, and Suzanne wants to take the summer off until at least October, November, and that's what she told me. And uh, she really can't do much until the fall, no matter what. And I said, gosh, I think Al's in the same same thing. And I think I, would, I wouldn't mind taking the summer off either. Um, that being said, if we have an event in the middle of that, I wouldn't mind participating at all. I'm not saying we won't do anything, but th there was some thought that we, because of lack of momentum, uh, that we could take a few months off and regroup in the fall. Well, Deborah is, even though she's not a board member, she totally masterminded the, the our lovely Zoom event last, uh, you know, last September. 
Yeah. In, was it? No, that was two years ago she did. Oh. The what, what, what happened last September? Jonathan did a big part and yeah. Stream. Stream had. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. And Robert Zelkowski. It was no, no, no. I'm talking about peace, the peace thing in September. That's coming up next. Right, but didn't that also, wasn't that also Zoom? I can't remember. Yeah, it was Zoom, Zoom, it was Zoom last year. Yeah, yes. we had, it was a long program. I remember that. So are we looking at a public program for Peace Day this year? Well, I wish Deborah were here, but she couldn't not be. And but she, she has been thinking about it a great deal, you know, and, and takes it quite seriously. Well, we, I think we will all be glad to help her whatever she wants to do. All right, can I just say, so, um, uh, so Suzanne's definitely, wait, let's just get this clear for minutes and decision. So Suzanne is just sending apologies. She's stepping down. It, is she really stepping down from board and treasurer? Is she still going to be sending checks and be officially be the treasurer? Even yeah, she'll, she'll still. I, I don't want to speak for her. She'll still. She'll still do that. But as far as going to meetings and doing stuff, she doesn't really want to do that. She'd love to have somebody else take over the treasurer thing. Okay, but, but shall I? Or I'll check with her. I'll phone her and see if she yeah. just will, in name, still be treasurer until we find someone else. And, and we realize that she won't be coming to meetings until like October or something. You know, she's sending her advance apologies and she'll do minimum treasurer work if there's no one else, right? And I'll come that's, that's what I understand. Okay, okay so. Question. At one point, I, I, not, yeah, not only was the treasurer on the, check signing list but the chair was also Hari are you not able to sign checks I do not recall that uh, item yeah the bank the bank uh, when I treasured the every year the bank had had us fill out a form right. with with who the officers were because they would they could all sign checks and they they had to individually sign. It was quite a process. It was either the, cha the chair, uh, there were two, I recall, the treasurer. And at one point, we were just had a chair. And then I think when you and I did it, you did it so that there were still two. I was not sign able to sign checks or chose not to. But anyway, it was like the two of us. I, mean, I seem to remember there were more, there were like three or four names that could sign, but... Maybe I'm remembering things bigger than they were, but it, it but any at any rate, the bank requires each year each, and because we have elections each year, and and somebody changes position, we have to fill out a new form every year. Oh, I know what Suzanne it is. Suzanne would know about that. No, okay, I I remember what you're thinking. We had to list our names and our positions so that they knew we were a bona fide organization, so we could get free checking. Right. That's what it was. That, That's that what it was. That wasn't so that everyone could sign checks, but they had to know, you know, who was in charge of IROC, that we were a legitimate organization. And I remember we, we had we had to list Jeffrey's street address because they required a brute brick and mortar office <laughs> for the organization. Right. The bank did. I don't See, know what I we're told you we needed a building. I told you. <laughs> will they take a will they take a, a mobile home? <laughs> Do we have enough money in the treasury to buy a mobile right, home and get, get an address? The, no. Those garden <laughs> sheds that people get, you know, those storage sheds with the yeah, that'll work. window, put a little curtain on it. Yeah, we can meet in there. Well, mean, right? we could put down our address and say such and such a street A, you know. Yeah. <laughs> tiny home. It's a new tiny home. Um so so this job of uh, informing the bank to get permission for checks needs to be done after the June elections. We should ask Suzanne about that. She might know more about that. Yeah, Suzanne, Suzanne, I'm sure, does it every year. So you're right. Yeah. Uh, we should ask her. But it, what, can, we can't do it till after June elections because we don't know who the, bo the bods are. Right. I wonder if we got any donations. 
you know, from anybody who went to our website. I wonder if, you know, we've gotten any website money, if that's how that would be logged. <laughs> we we haven't crossed that bridge yet, but we, we, that, we could. Uh, we have that good. button. We're ready for Well, I'll tell you, I sent out, I forgot to tell you this because I haven't really had a but I sent out the letter about the stickers, the bumper stickers, to the North America representative. He sent it out to the people in North America, at the URI ministry in North America. And so I did get a reply. You know, I, I said, use the JPEGs. If you want to make a donation to IROC, you, you can go to the website, gave them the website, and they could. So I, I just don't know if anybody's ever sent any donations to anyone. I don't know if we've gotten any. Where that money goes when you press the button. Suzanne would know. It would go into the IROC account. So should we ask I, Suzanne if we've had donations? Might be. Sure. Yeah, I'd like to know. Could be millions and millions. And, and probably, I know, wouldn't that be great? God, I love what you're doing, you know? I want to support that. Here's you a million. Buy a building. And well, and now we, we can do it more easily with now that we're all 501c3. We can buy a building. Yeah, we great. just got to get some bodies. We need to get larger meetings, whether they're Zoom or whether they're in a place. But, you know, a lot of us are just wearing out. But, it looks yeah, like in no, about a month or two we can meet again, probably. Um, probably not July, but maybe August or September. Uh, seems like we could publicly have meetings by then. I may be gone August. Oh, no. Well, the end of August, and I should be back by the end of September. We'll wait for you. Oh, no need. Uh, hello. Hi, Joe. Hi, Jonathan. What do we need to tell uh, Jonathan that he's missed? So the, uh, the reverends at CSL said uh, we can have meetings there again, but Ron Stover has to be there. What? Oh, that's Ron Stover has to be there. I'm all for that. Ron Stover should be there. He's going to be too busy in his I new business that, with Suzanne. Yeah. I don't think that's going to work. We won't be able to do it. I don't think it's going to work either. So, but that was, uh, that was their stipulation. Right. So. Okay. Thank you, Jonathan. Only if Rob is Ron Stover's there. Yeah. Just, right. Okay. I can show so. you my living room. Let me show you my living room. Okay. So here, I've thought about this before. All right. I've got a three-seater couch over here. We can put another chair here. There's a love seat here. A recliner here. There's some kind of a seat here. I've got six chairs around this table. I mean, you know, I have enough room with even social distancing maybe for people to meet if we, I mean, maybe people wouldn't want to come to a person's home, but I don't know, I could offer that. You know, I- That's certain, very gener generous of you. Yeah, yes. I, you know, and it would be nice See, I feel like, you know, my husband and I have spiritual gatherings here a lot, you know, with the Course in Miracles, really. And, but um, I feel like it's a blessing to the house and there's a good vibe in here. So I offer that to you. Thank you. Well, th this issue, I, I, I don't know if I'm jumping off the agenda or whatever, but this question of taking the summer off, um, I, I still think it should be decided at the June meeting when you have some official officers for the coming year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, it may, may just be from among us that are talking today. Who knows? Maybe we'll get somebody new, but. Yeah, let's do a, let's do our best to do a recruitment. If, if each one could bring one, man, that would be so great. And I know I thought I had one and that, that fish just jumped right off the hook. Uh, but I've exhausted all my friendships. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have. Oh, no. 
I need, I need to get somebody from the SGI Buddhist group. I mean, I, I, I don't anticipate that I'm going to be totally unattached to uh, IROC, but it'd be nice if we got somebody who committed to coming to all or most of the meetings. You know, Dr. On the border. Dr. What's Rob that? would be a good candidate for your organization. Which Dr. Rob? Oh, Dr. she's Rob. a Dr. Rob, I forgot her first name. But she's a Buddhist. She might be a good person. I'll talk about her. Okay. Can I say something? Jenicky said she might be interested in being part of our group, but she's going away for like six months. But she's, she's you know, I spoke to her and uh, she'd be lovely. She was. Great, yeah. great. And she's younger than all of us, I think. Yeah, youth is a great benefit. Yeah. Okay. Can I just say one more thing that um, the You're one in charge, direction, you can say more than one more thing. All right. But the one direction is to get more members and get back again. But another direction is if that doesn't take off, is to redefine IROC a little bit and become a little more informal and uh, accommodate, maybe redefine things a bit and accommodate like the way we are. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm just saying we might need to. Is that small minded? Yes, Annalie is shaking her head. I'm trying to understand what you're saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying maybe we need to accommodate a new way to be IROC, you know, while we're still in this COVID situation. I mean, we, we used to have nice big meetings with 13, 14, a dozen people. You know, that was from many different religions, you know, that came in and talked and shared and gave feedback about different things. It, and to me, we've really brought it down, you know, but we had to because of COVID. But I don't, I don't want to bring it down anymore. Well, I think, I think we lost some when we moved to CSL, N not uh, blaming yeah. the move, but I, I, you know, while it became easier for people like Harry and I from the North Shore to get to meetings, it, made it harder I guess people from Kalaeo and the yeah. west side or the so south side Bobby who came she was one of the original people who was that Joanne Watanabe Joanne, yeah, Joanne yeah. yeah yeah I wonder but if I, the Buddhist I wonder if the Hongwanji in Lahui where we were if they'd consider having us back in that big hot room uh, is it worth yeah. inquiring that's a possibility to inquire. It would be nice if we had a member, but you know, their, their gathering is getting old. You know, their membership is getting old. I, I don't know if there are young, you know, you know, Midori Kondo was one of the first people who was on the original IROC committee, just a, a saint lady. She moved to the big island. Um, I don't know. Maybe G Gerald Hirata would be able to speak in our behalf. But, you know, he says he's just a kahu. You know, he is not a trained Buddhist priest or is it a priest? Monk, maybe. Yeah. They have both priests yeah. and monks. Yeah. We, we don't in SGI, but we did right. once. But, right. And we revolted. So... And I believe that the woman who used to be at the Kapa Hongwanji has gone back to Japan because of some kind of illness. Miyaka. Miyaka. Yeah, you know, you know we, we shouldn't beat ourselves up too much. This happens in religions. I have a brother who was, in the, was a priest in the Episcopal Church and remember him talking about the Episcopal Church in America just becoming a niche religion for certain kinds of people because they were having trouble growing. And, and I think all, all organizations, especially nonprofits where we can't pay officers or pay secretaries, uh, we're totally dependent on volunteerism. And the people are generally beautiful people, very dedicated, but they, get, they become old. The nature of religion in America has changed a lot in the last seven years. Um, we've had a lot, a lot of drop off of 
what what we grew up as normal religions, you know, your normal Protestant religions, and now more than half of Christians are evangelical are evangelical Christians, more than half. So just because of that, they're not inclined to join anything in our faith at all. So it's really changed. The whole environment has changed a lot. Well, what Wendy said was very profound and I think very true. One of the, one of the answers I get when I'm trying to like promote the Buddhists uh, is I don't like organized religion. Right. That's right. I mean, that's, the, that's one of the most common responses I get. And, and they don't, and what Wendy says is that most, some people want to join a group or an organization because it's very, it, it is very important to, teaching religion, I think, and encouraging each other in it, but the idea of a religion versus just the joy of divine love or enlightenment and not having to, you know, be involved in rules and schedules and things like that is also appealing to people. So we're, we're, we're dealing with, uh, you know, changes in religion and in society, but uh, I think there's still a place for interfaith important place and i think we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll we'll come back we'll come back from summer vacation that, that, was, <laughs> that was symbolic not, not that we was will have election <laughs> next month right we will have an official meeting with elections yeah, and perhaps yeah. suzanne can pop in to vote or she can vote in yeah sure, sure. or something sure so and, is there anything else we need to go over before next month's meeting I don't know. Uh, so I'll put down this proposal that we have, uh, no, that Suzanne is going to take a few months off and not come to meetings. Uh, but that was not, and she is, let, he, she's definitely stepping down from board. Is that correct? Or just, was that not I didn't, clear? I didn't hear that part. I just heard she would rather not be a treasurer but if we need a treasurer to write checks and do the addition and stuff for us. Yeah, it looks like not, she's, she's nobody is, nobody is jumping ship. That's not there's nothing true about that at all. Even Al and me, there's none of nobody's jumping ship, but we'd all like to have more people and more support right. and more involvement. That's the truth. Each one bring one if we can. Yeah. If yeah. We you know, and I just ask so, if somebody, if somebody uh, just from my conscience, I, I want to ask this, is somebody willing to take, take notes from minutes? I remember Hari giving me a little pep talk months and months ago saying, you know, you don't have to do so much detail, just point, point, point. Hari, I'll tell you, you what, to I'll do it. That? I'll do it for next month. Okay, I'll, I've got the notes now, but- I'll do for, it for next month, no I problem. Mean, I, I'm not going to be secretary after next month, so I will do it of course, for next month. And then I'm not secretary, so. But thanks if somebody else can do minutes and also do the reminders of people. But as just a board member that's supportive, if somebody wants to phone me and say, could you send this message around on text or something that I, you know, I'll, I'll be like a, an Indian, but not a chief. You know, so. Yeah. Ending with the feather or a duck? Yeah, with a feather, just one. <laughs> Beautiful. Peacock feather. Peacock. Yeah. Well, so, thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank I look you. forward to reading your blog, Harry. I saw that. Rob it's good. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. So that'll I'm, be. I, have, I didn't respond to it, Harry, but I, I might. More to write come. Something. More to come. Okay. Well, uh, God, God bless everybody, and we'll see you next month. Uh, and have a, have, a, have a great Memorial Day weekend. Have a great summer. Have a great summer solstice. That's yeah. right. Before we hang up, Harry, do you know how to uh, end the recording and save it? Um, I know how to end, and apparently, I'll. I, I think I can save it if we all leave soon. Yeah. Okay. So we you we all leave before you. I but I'll save it. Jenny wants it. Okay.
Right. We'll leave it with you to and send us all the recording. Thank you. Okay. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Okay. Love you guys. Om Shanti. Bye bye. Shanti Om. Shanti Om.